So in this video, we're going to look at how we find H3O plus concentration and pH of a strong and weak acid solution. And to do this, we have to realize that in an aquatic solution or aqueous solution uh, that has an acid in it, we have two sources of H3O plus, the acid and the water. However, for a strong acid, it's relatively easy because we're just going to assume that the H3O plus given off by water is so small that it doesn't matter. Because remember, in a strong acid, 100% of your acid will ionize. You'll let off all your acidic hydrogens, or, or the strong acidic hydrogens, rather. And so the H3O plus from water is just way too small. It's not even worth calculating. Therefore, the amount of H3O plus in solution is equal to the solution of your strong acid. For example, let's say we have a one molar solution of hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. The amount of H3O plus we have in solution then is just one molar. They're equal to each other for strong acids. For a weak acid, it's a little more complicated and that's because only a part of our acid ionizes. We can't just say that the concentration of acid is equal to the concentration of H3O plus. Rather, we need to solve an equilibrium problem. We, and we need to solve that our weak acid plus our H2O goes to A minus to H3O plus, And this will have some kind of equilibrium constant or Ka with it. But we know how to solve these. We've, we've done these problems before. It's a nice table. So we set up an ice table for our weak acid equation. Then we solve the ice table with our information given. We have a K expression. We should be able to do that by now. We substitute our equilibrium expressions into our K and we determine H3O plus from there. Calculate pH and again, check our answer. It doesn't make sense. Um, by that, I mean if you're dealing with an acid, you should get a pH below 7. If you get a pH above 7 and it's just acid and water, you've done something wrong. But weak acid is just an equilibrium problem, just an ice table problem. Um, something you've done before and you should have confidence in doing well at this point. So another way to measure or talk about the strength of acids is called percent ionization. Um, that is how many molecules will give off an acidic hydrogen. The higher that percentage, the stronger the acid. And that concentration of the acid that gave off your hydrogen, that's your H3O plus concentration. Now, if you increase your initial concentration of acid, that will increase your H3O plus at equilibrium. That's a given. The more starting material you have, um, the more products you'll have, or the more reactants you start with, the more products you'll have. Um, but this in turn actually decreases percent ionization. Um, it's a little counterintuitive, but the more reactant you start with, remember you're just trying to get to an equilibrium. Um, you're trying to get to that Ka value. And what you actually find out when you do these calculations is that the more reactant you start with with the weak acid, the lower your percent ionization. So percent ionization isn't really fixed per acid. You have to calculate it based on your starting conditions. And the um, calculation equation for this is your concentration of acid that released a hydrogen, your ionized acid, divided by your initial concentration of acid times 100%. Or it's the amount of H3O plus in solution at equilibrium divided by the amount of weak acid you started with times 100. Right. So what do you do if you have a solution of acids, a strong acid with a weak acid? How do you figure out pH? Well, again, this is relatively easy. We're going to assume that the strong acid dominates. We don't even care about the H3O plus given off by the weak acid. It's so small, it's not going to change any of our calculations. Um, therefore, H3O plus is equal to your strong acid concentration. And for a mixture of weak acids, it's generally the same too. You just look at whatever is your strongest weak acid, 
What is your weak acid with a bigger Ka value? You only need to do your equilibrium equation for that acid. We're going to assume that that is dominating your H0 plus concentration, and so you don't have to consider any other weak acid. So that makes our calculations easier. And with that, that's it for that this video, and I'll see you in the next video.